a girl who desperately wants to be friends with her snotty cousin and her group of friends, agrees to spend the night in the haunted house next door to be part of the group. This is Ryan. This is Ashley. And this is Ruining Ruining Our our childhood Childhood Presents... Are we still afraid of the dark? That's right. I'm not even gonna try to <laughs> try to match it up. Yeah, it's there's too many words. It is a long title. In our movie podcast, it's so much easier to just say "ruining our childhood." Yeah, to match your pitch a little bit. Also, this is kind of new for us, where we're not happy-go-lucky during the yeah. title, where I'm trying to sound more monotone and eerie. Yeah, we're trying to have that serious tone because this is a serious show. Serious. Serious show. (laughs) This is a serious show. So this is our third episode of Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? Where we watch the 1990s classic, Are You Afraid of the Dark? That is true. And I feel like we haven't recorded one of these in a long time, even though we probably did last week. But yeah, this was a long week for me. It was. It was a long week. And I don't think we did one last week. I think it was like two weeks. So it's been a couple weeks since we did one. That's probably true. How do we do this thing? Hi, my name's Ashley. Hi. I'm Ryan. Oh, we've been married, right? Yeah, we have been. Cool, cool. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> We're looking at our segment outline going, what do we do next? Yeah. It's a, it's a weekly podcast where we re-watch the childhood classic... Are you still afraid of the dark, or are you afraid of the dark? It's it, that was good. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of editing. Um, and I'm gonna help you edit. So yes. I'm gonna teach Ryan how to edit a podcast. Buckle up, folks. It's just gonna be me yelling at you a lot. <laughs> is what it's gonna end up being. It's gonna be nice, and, and I'll painful. be like, just give it to me. So you kind of gave the log line, but the t- uh, episode title is the tale. Of the Lonely Ghost. Yes. It's an it, episode about a girl. A girl ghost. Or were you talking about the... Amanda. Amanda. Yes. Whose parents were nice enough to say, we're going up north because there's some Science. sort of a scientist, <laughs> as the yeah. storyteller told us. Yeah, this week it was David's story, mm-hmm. who apparently has the hots for Kristen which is Rachel Blanchard's character of the Midnight Society. And he (laughs) is not very good on the details. He's like, her parents are some sort of scientist. Don't think about it too hard. (laughs) Let's move on. They had to go up north because they're some sort of a scientist. Just Uh, say this girl's going to go live with her cousin and aunt for the summer. Then don't even give us the detail about her parents. When I was a kid, I went and stay with my aunt for like a month and it wasn't because my parents were scientists some sort (laughs) some sort of scientists they just wanted to get rid of me for a month yeah and also have me experience different things that i don't normally get to experience and i will say i feel bad for this girl yes amanda getting dropped off because her cousin was a total b word oh we'll talk about beth beth or as i like to call her molly ringwald knockoff She really did look like Molly Ringwald. She did. Let's go ahead and start uh, breaking down the episode with our categories. And we like to start it off with a little category we like to call, Well, Hello There, where we talk about any famous or recognizable actors or actresses that we recognized. I said recognized too many times. Are you drunk? No. Uh, No. Oh, right, right. No. The only person I noticed was Amanda. Mm -hmm. The actress's name is Laura Bert Ram. Yes. And she's been acting quite frequently uh, no. the past 30, 39 years, 29 years. 29 years. I don't know how to do math. And she was in 50 50 with Jogo. Jogo and Seth Rogen. Yeah. And Andromeda. What's that? It's like a space show. Oh, okay. I remember watching it a little bit. So somebody is listening right now going, yeah, it's Andromeda. Yeah, but I apologize. I was not really into it, but I feel like my brother watched it. Probably, it kind of seemed like a Star Trek type show, and it had Hercules. 
Kevin Sorbo? Yes. Oh, okay. So. Seems like a legit show. That was the only person uh, that I remotely recognized. Yeah. And she was also in an episode of Supernatural. So I assume that's probably where I recognize her from. Oh, okay. And I think she's in a, a couple episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark over the seasons. Mm-hmm. So we'll see her again. I did see, according to her IMBD, she's actually in the in new the one. New one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so. also saw that. Did you see anybody else? No, that was the only person. Yeah. yeah. I kind of looked up some of the people or to see if anybody had pictures. Like, as we've established, if you have a picture on IMBD, you probably are still acting or at least update the yeah. profile. But um, there wasn't really anybody. Hmm. You want to move on to the next category? Yeah. Our next category is called Let's Get Digging, where we talk about the plot And, of course, the plot holes. And then we also name our funniest and cringiest parts of the episode. What did you think about the plot? Did you think it was fine? I didn't have any real issues with it. Uh, My biggest issue with the plot was it seemed like the cousins didn't know each other. Yeah. How close is this family? Yeah. Are you really going to go stay with an aunt and a cousin if you don't know them that well? just depends on the situation. If your parents are some sort of scientist and they need to go to the north for some reason. But I, I did think uh, the fact that one's trying to mess with the other and try to get her to spend the night in a possible haunted house. I was like, that seems like something I would do to my cousin if I had one. <laughs> Aw. Sad. Sad music. But it's here. like something like I would do to my brothers. I, I don't know. I always had a remote, a pretty good relationship with my cousins. I mean, there was a com- some rocky times with my cousin that I lived closest to, mm-hmm. Corey. What up? <laughs> Does she listen to this? I think so. Oh, okay. Well, hello, Corey. You know, we had our... I, because we lived so close, it was more like a sister-sister relationship. Yeah. We get mad at each other or jealous or whatever and your emotions. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. But Beth is a legit bitch oh yeah no she's the worst the minute amanda walks in this sweet little amanda girl just walking in (laughs) going hi i'm your cousin and she's just like don't touch my shit yeah don't touch the old lady that lives with us weirdly and you know yeah you're dumb my my parents taught me to keep my hands to myself. You don't need to tell me not to go touch the nanny that lives with you. And if okay. I want to touch the nanny, I'm going to touch the nanny. <laughs> that sounds gross, but yeah. I, I agree. Her cousin, though, is this horrible person that wants to trick her littler cousin into staying alone in a house next door where apparently a girl dies. Yeah. And it, they don't really talk about it, but it sounds like she might have starved to death. It's a little dark because her mom leaves... And she's supposed to go stay with her grandma, Mm -hmm. but then she just goes back home, and they find her dead. That was a little weird. I'm going to say she just starved to death, other than somebody, like, preyed on her and murdered her, because she was an eight-year-old alone in her house or something like that. Yeah. No. It's, regardless, it's a pretty dark story. It was a very dark story. Yeah. What plot holes did you have? So, Amanda goes into this house... Meets the ghost who can't talk because the little girl can't talk. They never established why. No, they don't. They just said she was a a mute child when she was alive. Mm -hmm. And the ghost is trying to communicate with her. It's I think it's the second time and she's trying to get her to go find her mom, who Mm -hmm. apparently the old nanny that was living with her cousin is her mom. Go figure. And Convenient. Yes. And (laughs) apparently when you're a ghost, you get abilities like telekinesis because she opened the door and locked the door Mm -hmm. for amanda so i i I was just like i didn't know that was a thing what i didn't get was she wants and this makes sense she wants amanda to help her but she's writing help me on the walls Mm -hmm. because again she can't talk but she writes it backwards because she's in a mirror okay she's in a mirror world which they don't develop or explain but then she comes out and she writes it normal yeah, because she's out of the mirror. So you're saying she was in the mirror writing on the walls? She was writing on the wall in her r- mirror room, which I don't know if it's heaven or... It's basically her room, but the mirrored image, but that side of the mirror has her room furnished. Yeah. There's dolls. And 
I think she wrote it on the wall in her mirror room. Okay. And then she came out. Okay, so not such a plot hole as <laughs> Ryan was confused. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Nope. Would not be. <laughs> I just feel like the whole plot in general, I'm not quite sure what the lesson is to be learned here. That if you're just looking at, say, the nanny plot line, so pine after the death of your daughter, don't ever... I, I mean, I know a loss of a child is a horrible thing, and you probably never get over it, but mm -hmm. she looks, like, withered, and she's living right next door, which is probably not the healthiest way to cope with your child's death is to live next door, but then they did mention she had nowhere to go. Yeah. her uh, Amanda's aunt said that to Beth when Beth was complaining about her. But basically is just wait it out and maybe that you're the ghost of your child will pull you into a mirror world where you guys live happily ever after. Yeah, so is she dead now? Th that's what I want to know. That's confusing. She was like, you know what? This world sucks. Yeah. Screw it. I'm going into mirror land over Where here. I instantly become 20 or 30 years younger. Yep. And I get to hang out with my child who I thought was dead for all these years. Sign me I up. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's a good life. But I just don't know what the lesson is. I don't know either. Not to say every episode needs to have some sort of lesson learned, mm -hmm. but I feel like the last two did a little bit. And now they're just living in that mirror thing, so they can come out anytime they want? I don't know. Yeah. That it's a plot hole. It's, it's what I like to call a plot hole. <laughs> and the fact that she even went in with the creepy little ghost child. Yeah. She was creepy. She was a creepy. She did not. But she was a very happy looking ghost child. You say happy, I say demented. I thought happy. I don't trust her. I thought that was a perfectly happy little ghost child. I do not trust her. With a weird choppy haircut. <clears throat> Yeah, I had a haircut like that when I was that age. A little choppiness? Yeah, hmm. I had a bowl cut. If there's one thing we established on this podcast, or maybe it's part of our movie podcast too, is I had some amazing hairstyles when I was younger. Mullets. As did I. Bowl cuts. Really uneven bangs at one point in third grade. My mom cut them. I had a bowl cut. You did. Had a spiked flat top. All the good ones. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, what was your funniest part? I don't know that it was, like, funny haha, -ha, but it was it was silly to me. We talked about how she keeps writing help me on yes. the wall. And when Amanda goes into the room and it's everywhere, the ghost comes out again and writes it again. I get it. You <laughs> want help. Just point. Stop writing on the walls. I have to clean this. Yes, because at one point, her aunt thinks her and Beth did it. Yeah. So they, she makes them go over there and clean it. I know, like, reading things backwards is hard. No, it, it's six letters. And I feel like this little girl is really not giving Amanda credit at all. Yeah. She's like, you're, you're a dumbass, I can tell. Let me just start <laughs> writing this again. I better write it one more time. Yeah. She really wanted her help. Mm -hmm. Mine wasn't even part of the actual story. It was at the beginning of the Midnight Society. For some reason, Eric does not like Frank, and Frank makes fun of Eric, which, okay, I don't get it, guys. He, Eric has not liked Frank since no. the first episode because... He gave him a very reluctant thumbs I mean, up to join the Midnight Society. Yeah, it's part of our deciding at the end of each episode is his reluctance yeah. to even give Frank any sort of credit for mm -hmm. his story. That is correct. So he, Frank's making fun of him, and he's like, I'm going to do my worst. What did he say? I think that was it. And he's like, you better stop or I'm going to do my worst. And then he, like, hit him twice, and it wasn't even... It was like a little, the lightest shove you've ever seen. Yes. Yes. And then you turned to me and were like, that was his worst? <laughs> it wasn't even part of the episode. It was you <laughs> making that joke. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, like, we watched a guy hit a guy with a football helmet last night. That would be someone's worst. That's true. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about sports. Sport. Football. Miles Garrett. The Cleveland Browns. Yeah. Hashtag sad. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, what was your cringiest part? Anytime the creepy ghost girl was on screen, I, I don't trust her. She's too scary to be a good ghost. 
She's not angelic. She looks like she is all yellow and yeah, moldy. Very pale. Pale? I mean, she looks like a ghost, but she yeah. doesn't look like a ghost that I would be like, yeah, I'll go into that creepy mirror world with you. Ghost? Yeah. No, I'm good. No. And uh, what was yours? Uh, mine was when Beth goes into the mirror world and she's screaming for help. But then like at the end, Amanda's come back and she's going to now help her. She just keeps screaming for help. And when you open the door, you realize it's a closet. How were you locked in a closet? Closets don't have locks. It's magic. It was not. But it was also, it was the way in which she was yelling for help was just like, help, I'm so scared, help. That's it was very true. just, it was real cringy acting. There's quite a bit of that in this one yeah. when it comes to Beth. Yeah. Did you have anything else about the overall story or do you want to move on? I think we shall move on. I did want to just say that I loved uh, Aunt Dottie's gasp at the beginning. She's helping Amanda with her luggage Mm -hmm. when Amanda first arrives. And Amanda thinks she hears something from the house next door. And Aunt Dottie's like, no, nobody lives in that house. I can't sell it. It's haunted. Whatever. But then she gasps in horror and her eyes get really big because the for sale sign fell down. Yeah. And then she went over and picks up the for sale sign and gives it like a good, uh, I fixed this, takes one step away and it falls over. Yeah. And I'm like, you could hear that fall. Yeah. It's like, is it a ghost or is, do you just suck at putting signs in front of your house? Go ahead with the next category. Our next category is called, woo, woo, red flag alert. What were the signs that these kids are just statistics in a ghost story? (laughs) You're so bad today. Uh, Because I honestly thought after Red Flag Alert, it was my note for the Red Flag Alert. (laughs) So I was like, uh... For anybody just joining us, we're usually not this bad. And I've said this before, but I don't know what it is about. It's nighttime. Yeah. We've had a beer. Or two. So we're just here, living our lives. Best life. What uh, red flags did you notice? Um, There were not as many as the previous two episodes that we've done so far. Mm-hmm. Just I just talked about it, but Aunt Dottie giving Amanda a little backstory on the house next door. And then she's like, yeah, I'll go spend the night in that. Exactly. When Beth dares her to uh what was yours that's exactly what i had was you know like your aunt is essentially saying like hey it's unsellable yeah and now your cousin's telling you it's haunted don't go over there don't become the statistic and then when she goes in there the first thing you hear is children laughing yeah there's one thing that gets me every time is creepy little ghost children (laughs) In scary movies, that is the scariest thing to me versus a guy with a knife. Just because I live in this jaded world where people get stabbed all the time. So, a guy in a Mike Myers mask with a knife. Not as creepy as little children ghost laughing. Or just real children laughing. <sighs> Next time our If they're in come. Victorian style dress, no. I'm Next- out. Next time our nephews come, I'm just going to give them like five bucks to just walk by you and laugh creepily (laughs) the whole time they're here. If you you go the extra mile and dress them like they grew up in 1800s London, then... Challenge accepted. Then you got me. (laughs) Totally doing that to you. And just the backwards writing that said help me, no, I'd be out. I wouldn't even have gotten into that house, but... I'm not going in that house either. Yeah. F that. I will say Amanda immediately ran home. So at least she didn't try to press on and be like, it's cool. No, but she did because you said when she gets in the house, she hears the laughing and she's like, well, they said I got to go up to the little girl's bedroom. But she thinks it's her, Beth and her friends joking around. Yeah. I'm ta- I'm not even doing it. I'm not even going inside. I'm a sissy. I don't care. Call me one. Okay. 
I will later. Thank you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, do you want to move on, or did you have any more? No, that was the only one that I had. Yeah, it was yeah. a little low on the red flag alert. Mm-hmm. So the next category is, when was this made again? A reminder of everything 90s, where we talk about fashion, dated references, and technology. What did you have for fashion? Uh, right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the character, I believe her name's Kristen, uh, which is Rachel Blanchard. Okay. And she's rocking a real solid side pony. Yeah. Which nobody wears nowadays, except for Bailey in the WWE. (laughs) Didn't she cut her hair, though? Yep, she got rid of it. That's how you knew she was a bad guy. She cut her side pony off. Or, I'm sorry, a bad girl. That sounds gross. She's a heel wrestler. <laughs> I, I was fine with the bad guy. Yeah. I got the a villain. She's a villain. A heel, a heel not a not a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's a bad girl. She's a bad girl. <laughs> gross. God. I noticed Amanda's h- huge pants. They're so <laughs> baggy. It was khakis, and they were ridiculously baggy. I feel like her wardrobe, the first time you see her on screen, was made for a bigger child, and she just wore it. But I think that was just the 90s. We were really into baggy stuff. We really were, and khakis were. And some of it's coming back, but it's like the cropped baggy-ness. Yeah. It looks a little more stylish, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. There's stuff I find myself wearing these days that I never thought I'd wear, like higher-waisted pants. I've always been a jeans and t-shirt guy <laughs> i am too but you wear higher waisted pants but then i usually wear like a baggy sweater <laughs> touche so you can't see the where the waist begins or ends did you have anything else for fashion oh i got a couple other one we <laughs> talked about what's the jerk kid at the midnight society eric no not eric the one who frank, frank thank you frank he is wearing this weird patriotic American flag denim shirt where it's like the collars red, white, and blue, and the shoulders are like American flags, kind of, but the rest of the shirt's like a faded denim. It was a hideous shirt that she could only wear in 1992. Challenge accepted. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing I noticed was Beth at night when they first try to get Amanda to go into the next door house. She's wearing these huge silver peace sign earrings mm-hmm. that were really, really big. They were massive. Yeah. I wanted them. <laughs> You're like, I'll take those. And her bangs. Oh, my. Her bangs are just... Child preach. Out of this world. What? <laughs> they were done with a curling iron. Right. They sat up about five inches yeah. off the top of her head. Whew. They were just beautiful. They God. were glorious. They I were... wish I could do that with my hair. My hair's too heavy. Challenge accepted. Is that, is that what we're going to today? I'm gonna... saying challenge accepted every five seconds. I'm going to do my bangs like that tomorrow. I noticed Aunt Dottie at one point was wearing this weird pink and white vertical, vertically striped yeah. pantsuit. But the stripes were like two inches wide. I noticed that too. In her first scene, when she's meeting Amanda, she's wearing a floral white denim jacket. But I actually thought it was kind of cute. I'm not going to lie. I think you could get away with wearing it today. And at the time, I'm sure it was stylish for a middle-aged woman to wear. Mm -hmm. Did you have any dated references? I noticed the car that Aunt Dottie drove to pick her up in was this awesome wood paneled station wagon i think there i've seen maybe a couple cars that are wood paneled but you could tell like the person had painted it that way well i remember when the pt cruisers first came out Mm -hmm. like in the early 2000s they have a couple that were wood paneled but that was also over 15 years ago i know but it was like a retro thing then yeah yeah it was kind of like a retro thing they were bringing back from the around this time 80s and 90s And then also I noticed some wood paneling on the walls inside the house, which made me think of the house I grew up in. Good times. Good old wood paneling. The only thing I really had for, I guess, data references was just the insults, because the insults always get me in the show. Oh, yeah. And Beth calls Amanda a zeeb. Yeah. I've never heard that before. I don't know what that is. 
Maybe it's like a a dweeb in something with that starts with a Z. Yeah. A zit. She's like, and you have to prove that you're not a zeeb. What the fuck is a zeeb? Let's Google it right now. Yeah, what the fuck's a zeeb? Gonna... Throwing it in the old Google machine. Yeah. Urban Dictionary. Mm, this could be real disturbing. No. Oh. Zeeb. A total and complete loser. One able to do things like spend the night in a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the... <laughs> Urban Dictionary <laughs> definition came straight from this episode. <sighs> oh, that is awesome. Thank you, oh. Urban Dictionary. No, uh, let me know uh, if you ever use the word zeb in your vernacular as a child. And for listeners. the third time, challenge accepted. I'm going to bring that back. <laughs> Start calling people zebes. Uh, you cut me off in traffic? Guess what? Hey, thanks, zeb. <laughs> Some people probably be like, is that a racial slur? Like, what? <laughs> Sounds like it could be a racial slur. They'll be like, oh, he must know him. His name's Zeb. <laughs> he just calls him zeb. Because he's a jerk. Yeah. Uh, did you have any technology? I didn't. I didn't notice any. I didn't either. Yeah. It was a I technology don't know. free. Yeah, it was a technology-free episode. Yeah, it's kind of sad. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, should we move on to our awards then? Yes, we shall. The we give out two awards here on ruining our childhood presents. Are we still afraid of the dark? Uh, the first of which is the Kel Mitchell Award for exceptional overacting. Whom did you give your award to? There's only one person I could. Oh, I know who it is. It's Beth. Oh, man. The actress's name is Laura Levin, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, Laura Levin. And she just was the absolute worst. I mean, not just the character, but her acting. Like, you pointed out when she was yelling for help when she was stuck in the mirror slash closet. She, was, she Her acting wasn't that great. But some of the things that she would say, like when she's yelling at Amanda for touching nanny mm -hmm. and she, she's like i don't even know why she's here and she's always watching me because she's your fucking nanny yeah she's gonna uh, yes you're too old to have a nanny but also this lady is down on her luck and your mom's nice enough to have her let her live with you guys yeah bitch my i also gave it to superstar beth my favorite was she had her rollerblades out because uh -huh. she was gonna go rollerblade and she, like, grabs him off the counter, and she's, like, walking to the door, and she just looks at uh, Amanda, and she's like, Don't touch my stuff! <laughs> just, just randomly, like, she has Tourette's. <laughs> she's just like, hey, I'm gonna go skate at the park. Don't touch my stuff! It, when she did touch Nanny, or she was, like, shaking her hand or something, it was the first time Amanda met Nanny, and... She's like, don't touch your wrinkly hand. And I felt so bad for the lady because she's just right there and she's talking shit about her. Just... If you touch her wrinkly hand, I won't let you touch my stuff. Oh, yeah. God. <sighs> she was the worst. The worst. So aggressive. Why do you hate your cousin so much, Beth? Uh, what happened to you? Your mom seems perfectly nice. Other than I do have this small thing where I feel like they're verbally abusing that old woman. The nanny. She just... I know it's because of the loss of her child, but before I knew that was her child, mm -hmm. I just felt like she was in servitude at this house, and Beth obviously verbally abuses her, but does the mother. Touche. I don't know. That seemed like a pretty pretty sweet aunt. Just a sweet lady. Yeah. So I don't think she was probably... Who has a horrible, horrible child. Yeah, she's... You know what? They always say, uh, only child... Turns out like spoiled little shit. That's true. She was an only child. Spoiled. No offense to anybody that's shit. an only child. And if you're an only child and you're not a spoiled little shit, good on you. Yeah. You know what? Rise above. Be good job. Yeah, don't be the stereotypes of yeah. only children. I don't know. I have some we have friends that I'm sure are only child and they're probably perfectly good people. <laughs> One of them who I know listens to this podcast. Dear friend of ours. He's a great person. Only child. What are you talking about? 
One Gregorius oh. Greg. I don't know why. I was just like, everybody we know has... I don't know. No. I'm sorry, Greg. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ashley forgot about you, but... I didn't forget about him. You're I'm just... the exception, sir. He is. Yes. Anyway, back to the podcast. <laughs> the next award is called the Kenan Thompson Award for just doing the best under the circumstances. Who did you give yours to? I gave it to The Nanny. Okay. Which was played by an actress named Sheena Larkin. Uh, I looked her up. She was in... The biggest thing that I noticed she was in was The Sum of All Fears with uh, Ben Affleck. Oh, okay. And I think she was also in The Day After Tomorrow. So she's still been in some big things. But she just seemed like a really sweet lady in the episode. You kind of feel bad for her because clearly her daughter died. She, in an episode where there was a lot of overacting, I didn't feel like she was overacting. That's true. I liked her a lot. I give mine to Amanda. Oh, really? I think she might be the least cringy child actor that we've seen so far in an episode. I thought she was way more natural. There was only a couple times where she's a little shaky mm-hmm. uh, when she's in the house. Yeah. Uh, in the haunted house. And there was a part that made me laugh. I almost put it as my funniest. But it's when the girls are surrounding her outside before she goes into the haunted house. And her cousin Beth is like, here's the keys. And she's like, won't Aunt miss those? Yeah. And I don't know why it made me laugh because I was like... Do you think she, like, cuddles with these keys at night? <laughs> and also, was the way she said it was, I read this right off of the script. Yeah. Yeah. Won't Aunt miss those? Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I thought she was a fairly good actress, so. Yeah, she really was. So, should we move on to our final thoughts on this episode? Yes. The Tale of the Lonely Ghost. When you think of the title, The Tale of the Lonely Ghost... Think of somebody that needs to get on Tinder. <laughs> Not a small child who misses her mom. <laughs> 2019, the tale of the lonely ghost would be like, somebody's just like, I'm just so lonely. I need a friend yeah. or a hookup or something. Uh, swipe left. Swipe left or swipe I right? Don't I don't know. You swipey swipe. <laughs> you uh, do some sort of swiping on You do there. some swiping. Who knows? We've been married for a long time. Yeah. We don't know what these things are. (laughs) We're really doomed if we ever divorce. Ugh. (laughs) You're thinking about it. I'll just be single. I'm not doing those things. It's too hard. By the time we get divorced or I die a horrible death at a young age, (laughs) something will change. The the dating game will have changed again. And you'll be even more lost. Don't say that to me. Are about, you sad because I was dying? You're talking about dying? Or because you'd have to date again? <laughs> then, then you're like, it's going to change again. Oh, uh, Jesus. Uh, so, what did you think about this episode? I gave this episode a pretty solid Betty Ann. And just so we're clear, I just did the Betty Ann yeah. thumbs up. I thought there was parts where the acting was a little rough. But I did like the story. I didn't think it was the cheesiest ghost story that I had ever heard. I thought there was some plot holes. But I think as a kid, I would have really dug this episode. I agree. But I did give it the Eric's thumbs up. Yeah. Reluctant. Because I felt, again, the story... I I get it. It's a 20-minute episode. They can only go so many ways. Yeah. With developing, but I just felt like the story was rushed at the end. I definitely think the ghost child was creepy. Does she even have a name? We keep calling her ghost child. She's literally listed as ghost on IMBD. That poor child. She doesn't even have a name. What kind of mother doesn't give her child a name? That sweet baby angel ghost. (laughs) I mean, that's one of the things. It's like, give the child a name, have the mother mention it at least. I don't know. You know what? I bet that lady talks about how her child died a lot. And she's like, my child, Sarah, died at a very young age and it really hurt me. But But this shit-ass Beth, she's all about herself. That's true. She doesn't pay attention to what's going on. It doesn't involve her, so she doesn't care. That's true. Because she's a bitch. I mean, I'm on the fence, but I'm going to give it to Eric just because there was just some plots points that I didn't particularly like, and I felt like it was really rushed. 
That being said, I feel like I do remember this episode watching it for the first time as a child. Okay. Because I remember the house. I remember the creepy ghosts. Again, I've always had a thing with children ghosts, even when I was a child. You didn't like them? No. They're creepy as fuck. (laughs) And if one was chasing me down the street, ugh. I feel like you're, like, imagining it. I literally was, and I was like, where can I get a ghost child to come chase Ashley down the street? <laughs> so mean. And I'm then the I went, nicest to you. And then I thought about it for, like, three seconds, and I went, you don't know any ghost child. <laughs> there you go with your... You don't know any ghost child. <laughs> you don't know any ghost child to come have them scare Ashley. You just say ghost children. Ghost child. You just say the wrong word. <laughs> Uh, so yeah that that's that's it for us guys we're never doing this again (laughs) this is it this is the end i'm just kidding uh we appreciate you guys listening hopefully you're listening on a saturday like this used to air back on the snick days if you want if you want to give us a little follow follow or follow follow i don't know if you want to give us a follow over on instagram at ruining our childhood or Facebook at Ruining Our Childhood, if you still use Facebook. Some people do. I do. I really don't. Oh. I go on there. I read comments. I get really angry. On BuzzFeed articles, I read comments. I get really angry. I check what old classmates are doing, and then I'm like, eh. Right. Well, I don't have a Twitter, but our podcast does. It does. It's at ROC Movie Podcast. It's... More or less the same as our other social media. But you might be one of those people you don't have a Facebook or an Instagram and you got a Twitter. Come throw us a follow. Yeah. We we like being told that we're liked. Yeah. But who doesn't? You know? Let us know what you think of this episode. Yeah. You giving it a Betty Ann? You giving it an Eric? Ooh. Yeah. Participate. Participation also, trophy. If you want to check out Podchaser. Which is a, I don't think it's a newer website. Mm -hmm. It's not old, but it's not new. But it's a cool website where you can find podcasts, follow your friends, and figure out what they're listening to if they're on Podchaser. And you can follow us at Ruining Our Childhood. Yeah. See what we're listening to. Yeah. My favorite murder. Pretty much. That's always number one. Absolutely. For me. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening again, and I'll see you never, because I'm talking to you in a microphone. (laughs) You'll hear us next week. Yeah, with a brand new episode of Ruining Our Childhood Presents. Are we still afraid of the dark? That, I don't know. Are you? I don't know. I think we already established this. Bye. (laughs) Bye.